keep moving forward. What's going on, everybody? Put your ones up in the air. I'm your host, Cage. This is Cage My IQ's UFC 292 Picks and Prediction Show. Usually, I'm joined by my co-host, Miles Long, but he is sick right now, so it's just me this week. I'm going to be breaking down this highly anticipated pay-per-view event live from the TD Garden uh, Arena in Boston, Massachusetts, with the main event of Aljamain Sterling versus Sugar Sean O'Malley. Before we get into any of that, of course, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, W Energy. It is the stuff that you take to get you the energy without having any of the grogginess afterwards. Check out this video about W Energy right now. Yo, what's good, brother? You ready to live stream? Oh man, I just don't know. I, uh, I'm feeling real low on energy right now. What? You know what, man? I know exactly what you need. You need some W energy. Let me send you some W energy right now. W? W? W who? W what? W energy? What's that? What's W energy drink you say, Tim? W is a clean energy drink that is made to give you focus with no crash, jitters, or against like other energy drinks. W energy drink contains no maltodextrin fillers and don't use artificial dyes. W energy drink also contains vitamins, amino acids, nootropic, and 150 milligrams caffeine. Here, Tim, try W's energy drink latest flavor, Dragonade. How do you feel? Yo! Oh, oh, I'm feeling so much better. Damn, where do I get some more of that W from? Oh, that's what's up. Just go to the awesome website, W.GG, and use our special code Bloodline1 and get 10% off right now. That is W Energy. Definitely check it out. Use uh, promo code Bloodline1 to check out all their products and get a discount off of it. Now, check out the video for the Bloodline merch for the Bloodline Entertainment Network. You can't beat any of the products that we have. We got stuff for your phone. We got towels. We got shirts. We got cutoff shirts. You name it. We got it. Check out the video for our Bloodline merch. Put the ones up in the air. Tired of bored, uninspiring merch? Well, you need to go to bloodlinenetwork.com slash merch. We got merch for everyone, men, women, kids, in the home. We got tanks, V-necks, T-shirts, coffee cups. And we can't forget about beach towels. That's right. Get your ass off that hot ass sand and get your Bloodline Entertainment Network beach towels. Bloodlinenetwork.com slash merch. For your pleasure. You want to get you, you want to get your bloodline merch now while it's hot. We're growing. They got great uh, merch there. I got the black bloodline uh, merch shirt. I love it. It's very comfortable. Definitely rock it out and support the Bloodline Entertainment Network brand. And of course, if you want to talk to us, if you want to discuss sports, talk about wrestling with us, talk about MMA, talk about entertainment any of that stuff, please join the Discord channel for Bloodline ENT. The link is in the pin post. All you got to do is click it, join. Every one of us is in there. We want to get all the fans, everybody that watches the Bloodline Entertainment Network, we want you guys part of the family. So definitely click the link in the pin post and join the Bloodline ENT's Discord channel. We're doing a lot of things in there to get everybody incorporated. A lot of just talking back and forth. It is a family here at the Bullion Entertainment Network. We want you to join. So definitely join the Discord channel. Let's get started with the breakdown for UFC 292. 
this is going to be a popping weekend in Boston, Massachusetts. We've got 10 to 11 fights on this card. I've been looking forward to this. We had a couple of cancellations. We got a couple of fixes, but we are here two days away. I'm going to be giving you my picks and predictions, and I'm going to give, give you guys a little bit of a better aspect on each uh, fight on this card to go along with it if you're on the betting uh, part of UFC MMA. And, of course, I'm also dropping Cage's bet slip tomorrow as well and to get it, you guys ready for that. So definitely check that out. I highlight a few of my bets that I'm going to be placing on UFC 292. We're killing it the last couple of weeks with my bets. I had an off week a couple of weeks ago, but we're back on the winning track. So definitely check that out on the Bloodline Networks, the website that we have for you guys to check out all of our content, all of our articles, and all of my bet slips and prediction videos. So definitely check out the BloodlineNetwork.com website. Let's get started with the action. We got the first fight on the prelims. We got a women's flyweight matchup between Marina Maroos versus Kareem Silva. Marina Maroos is the plus 150 underdog. Kareem Silva is the minus 170 favorite. This is actually a rematch from uh, Kareem Silva early in her career where she got on bar submission by uh, Marina Maroos. But these guys go in two totally different directions since then. Kareem Silva actually was dominating her physically on the mat in that first fight, but she hadn't developed her grappling and her submission expertise at that point. And Marina Maroos was able to expose a mistake that Silva made and then made her tap. In this one, I got Kareem Silva win this inside the distance. I think she gets it done round one, whether it's sub or KO. It doesn't matter. I got her in here. She's the far superior striker. She has the strength advantage, just like she did in their earlier matchup a, a few years ago. And I think she's going to be able to just maul Marina Murrows. Marina Murrows has that kickboxing style. She's good at striking. She's good at getting inside the clinch and taking her opponents down that are, aren't stronger than her. But she doesn't have the power in her punching style. She's all about the volume over the power. And Kareem Silva is going to have the strength advantage. She's going to be able to physically just throw herself at Marina Rose, take her down. She has knockout power. I, I see her taking down Marina Rose, getting the fight on top guard, and then uh, either finishing her with the ground and pound with those elbows and strikes or deciding to take the back and brand naked and choking her. She has won all of her fights by finish inside the distance. All but one are in round one. The lone one that was in round two was our very first fight in the UFC. So she's she is a finisher uh, in general. So I love the inside the distance uh, play here with Kareem Silva because you're not sure what she's going to do, if it's going to be sub or ground and pound at TKO. It all depends on the scenario that happens. So. I love Kareem Silva in this one. Uh, money line minus 170 is very favorable right now. You want to jump on it when you get a chance. I also love, like I said, inside the distance because she's won all of our fights uh, by finishes, uh, either sub or KO. And if you want to go even further, you want to hit the round one because every single finish but one has been in round one. So if you put that all together, that is a very nice uh, uh, bet to place on this uh, Boston 292 pay-per-view card that's going to be kind of less juicy than the last couple weeks that we've had. It's a lot of favorites are favored to win this one, and this is going to be the best play, I feel like, going into this Saturday because uh, the lines that you get and the fact that she's so dominant in the line is still so favorable for a fighter that is on the up and up, and I feel like she's going to break that top 10 sooner rather than later. So I'm going in this one. I'm going Kareem Silva, Kareem Silva by round one, and I'm going to go submission. I'm going to go rare naked choke in this one because I think she avenges her submission loss earlier in her career by getting one on Marina Murrows. She's going to work. Marina Murrows is going to work, but she's not uh, the type of caliber that's Kareem Silva is right now. Kareem Silva has established that uh, submission threat 
that uh, she's built her body up more and she's gotten more polished with her strike and power striking. So she's the uh, the one that's going to win this one uh, by first round. So let's move on to the next fight on this card. We got a women's flyweight matchup again between UFC veteran Andrea Lee versus pro, uh, up and coming star Natalia Silva. Lee is coming in the plus 275. Uh, underdog and Natalia Silva is coming in the minus 350 favorite. I'm going with Natalia Silva to win by second round KO. We got Andrea Lee. She's a very polished kickboxing star. And she lost uh, her first couple fights in the UFC. Then she ripped off a three fight win streak. And then she's kind of been on the dip since she had the controversial uh, split decision loss. To Macy Barber, which has nothing to do with Macy Barber, but she's very good at fighting from a distance. She's all about volume, overpower. She has decent uh, hip uh, uh, toss to, uh, to uh, take down, where she grabs you and throws you down, and then she gets in top guard and does a, a ground and pound there. But she's all about volume. She's all about out producing you. She's not as physical. If she's going up against somebody that's more powerful than her, but she's going to touch him up and try and stay and use her speed. And she has decent cardio on the other side. We got Natalia Silva, who's been on the up and up. She's showcased that she has the speed. She has the power. She has a really great movement and she has very underrated uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, experience. She's going to use that to beat you in the clinch with the knees, elbows, she, uh, but a majority of what she's going to do is with the straight punches. She's going to keep on moving. She's going to hit you for the angles. And with Andrea Lee, she's on the older, older side of things on her career. She's not as fast as she used to be. She's prone to get hit at times because she doesn't cover her face as well. That's why she tries to keep herself a distance away, kickboxing wise, so she can touch you up and move and avoid a lot of shots. She herself is prone to being taken down. We've seen that in the last couple of fights. That's kind of been her downfall is getting clinched up and taken down. And that's something, a sneaky play to where I think Natalia Silva can get her there. And I think she might use that early on against Andrea Lee to try and uh, release some of that energy that Andrea Lee has so she can't move as fast. But I got Natalia Silva... Just being the first to hit Andrea Lee, she's going to be the first to connect each time. She's going to intercept punches with her own. She's going to have the straighter shots. She's going to have to watch out for those high leg kicks of Andrea Lee. She does a good job of that. But I think inside the clinch is going to be the, the, the play for Natalia Silva against Andrea Lee. I think she's going to get inside the clinch. She's going to throw her down. She's going to be able to get in top or side bar. And if she doesn't get that sub – that uh, a lot of people think that she might get. I do see her winning by ground and pound in round two. I just think, uh, just like in the first matchup, Silva's on the up and up, and Andrea Lee's on the path down with that losing streak that she had. She's always with the wrong decision. She has the right tools. She's just not quick enough to the punch to beat her opponents, and she doesn't have that finishing power anymore. And when it goes to, to the judges, this is what happens. Uh, you you got you got to make sure that you don't uh, get burned by the judges, and that's something that Natalia Silva has kept herself from having to deal with is again to the judges because she has that uh, that power in her hand. So I got Natalia Silva winning by round two knockout in this one. I do not like that minus three hundred fifty uh, odds. I think it's too big. Uh, if you're gonna play anything here. Maybe look at the under one and a half line for, uh, for the fight, or look at Natalia Silva just by uh, KO, TKO prop. You might find something with that, that one, but there's not going to be a lot for you to look at with it because of the lines. Uh, the lines aren't screaming uh, for any of the favorites this week, but if you look at some of the odds that they have that I'm bringing up for you. Uh, there, there are some ways to find uh, you know, loopholes around it. Like you got Natalia Silva, if she wins by KO, TKO, DQ, plus 325, that's very well. 
uh, her by submission plus 400. You can look at that. If she, if the fight were to go to decision, that's plus 150. Uh, but if you want to play it safe, definitely do Natalia Silva winning by inside the distance. It covers everything inside the distance. Sub, DQ, you got KO, TKO, and that's plus 150. And you look at the over one and a half, it's minus 375. So I, uh, they're expecting it to go a little bit longer. But like I said, if you go under one and a half, it's plus 260. So you can get very good odds if you if uh, Natalia Silva can get her out under one and a half rounds. And because you're doing the inside the distance as well, you're hitting on plus 260 and on plus 150 as well. So definitely look into that. If you feel confident with this one, I'm going to stay away from either one of those because I love the cream silver bets even more. And I feel like Natalia Silva, she could go either way. She could win inside the distance or she could go to decision. So I'm going to stay away from this one, but those are the ones I like if I were to go and bet Natalia Silva. But definitely also look at uh, live bet this one as well because if Andre Lee, who's usually a fast starter, can go and win round one, you're going to get better odds live for Natalia Silva. So keep that in mind as well for this one. But for this one, I got Natalia Silva by round two KO. Let's move on to the next fight on the prelim. We got a men's middleweight matchup between uh, uh, Gerard Mirchard versus Andre Petrowski. You got GM3 who is a plus 210 underdog. You got Petrosky, who's the minus 260 favorite. I'm going Andre Petrosky to win this one by decision. There's going to be the threat of Gerard Mirchart uh, submitting him or getting him to choke out in the first two rounds because of it. he is very good with his chokes, uh, with how uh, Andre Petrosky wrestles offensively. It could put him in positions to get guillotine. But I feel like uh, Andre Petrosky has managed his gas tank very well the last couple of fights. He's gotten better as a just a pure uh, MMA fighter ever since he left uh the, the, the ultimate fighter. He's undefeated. Uh, he's done well with his wrestling. Even his submission game, you saw that fight against Nick Maximoff where he was able to get him in the choke and uh, submit him. This is going to be a very good test for Andre Petrosky to see where he's at. I think he gets the wrestling going. Uh, I think he's the better power puncher. Mirashant might be the better uh, accurate striker. But I feel like Petrosky is going to do more damage with his strikes than Mirashard is. I think Petrosky is going to try and use the, his wrestling to take down Mirashard. He's going to play it more safe, though. It's going to be more offensive with his wrestling. I feel like he's going to use it for control. And he's going to just use it to throw when he can, avoid uh, the chokes, and just favor uh, control time over position and uh and output and it's going to give him a chance to kind of wear down mirror shot it's going to try and control his uh gas tank and he's going to win the rounds by control and at the damage that i can do within that time and i think he's going to be able to do it for at least one or two rounds there's going to be that round maybe in between round two where mirror shot is going to be able to uh, come at him a little bit but I got Andre Petrosky win this one uh, by decision. I think he, his uh, wrestling is going to be the X factor in this fight. When you look in that bets for this one, he's minus 260. So I'm not a fan of that line. Maybe if you live bet it, you might get lucky. They haven't dropped down or maybe wait until right before the fight start and see if a lot of people go on your shot and then you bet Petrosky. But I like Andre Petrosky by decision. That's plus 350. That's a very safe one in itself, uh, considering that I don't think he's going to finish Mearshart. And then you got to hope that Mearshart doesn't get that lucky submission on uh, Andre Petrosky. But I like that. If you look at over one and a half, that's very generous uh, bet right there. It's at minus 135. So if you want to play it safe, you go with that. But those are really the only two. That's that I'm looking at with this fight. I like the over one and a half, and I like Andre Petrosky to win uh, by decision. So I'm going with that one. I think he stays undefeated, and 
and he gets that decision victory because of the ground and pound and the wrestling. And then he just, the one thing, like I said, he needs to avoid those chokes. So he needs to not be too offensive with this uh, wrestling because he's very dominant with getting those takedowns. He just has to avoid letting his head go out where he allows his uh, uh, submission artists like GM3 to get the hold of the neck. But I got Andre Petrovsky winning by a decision. And I like the over one and a half, and then I like him by decision. Let's move on to the next fight. We got the first of two tough finale championship fights. Uh, we got the 135-pound uh, championship. We got Cody D- uh, Gibson versus Brad Katona. In, in this one, I love Brad uh, Katona to win this one uh, by decision. This is a very tough fight uh, to decide. I think Brad Katona has a very good overall game plan. He's good with the striking. He's tough as nails. He, he showcased on the on the season of the Ultimate Fighter that he has good cardio. He he went to war in b- both of his fights. He has good takedown defense. He has uh, good takedowns as well. He doesn't overdo do it with his takedowns, but when he needs to, he goes for it. But he's going to keep on moving forward, and he's going to hit you. Cody Gibson's going to be a challenge show for him. He had a good run as well. But I think Brad Katoon is going to do just enough in this one. And he has the experience of the UFC, so I don't think he's going to shy away uh, at all. And this is going to be his second championship uh, for the Ultimate Fighter. So I think the experience is going to be on his side. So I'm going to lean towards Brad Katoon in this one to win by decision. This fight just happened, so the lines haven't come out yet because the fight happened on Tuesday, and they just announced it, so I was able to get this in in time. But my early bet for this one is Brad Katuna to win by decision. And look at what the over one and a half line is on this fight. And definitely, if it's juicy, definitely hit it. If not, definitely stay away from it. But my lean right now is Brad Katuna to win this one by decision and be the, the, the first two-time Ultimate Fighter champ. Let's move on to the next fight, uh, the second of two Ultimate Fighter uh, championships. We got the 155 championship between Kurt Holobo versus Austin Hubbard. We got Austin Hubbard, who has a great overall game plan. He has decent striking. He has good uh, wrestling. Uh, he's known for the boxing and the wrestling, but it, sometimes he struggles to put it together. And that kind of, and then his defense, that's kind of what got him released from the UFC. But then he got the second opportunity. He's kind of been able to work with Michael Chandler, uh, kind of being able to transition from the grappling to the striking and whatnot. And he had that uh, very close semifinal matchup where he was able to beat Roosevelt Roberts and make it to this one, where I thought it could have went any way. It went all three rounds, very close, and he got the the nod over uh, Roberts. And But on the other side, you've got Kurt Holobo, who went to war as well uh, in his fight against Jason Knight. This guy is tough as nails. He's always moving forward. He doesn't have the grappling side like Austin Hubbard does, but he has the KO power. He has his hands for days. He's going to keep pushing for. He's going to throw at you. He's not going to let up. He has good cardio. He showcased that he was always going to move forward. He, he, he'll take a shot to give a shot. He has a good chin. And I see Corobo knocking out Austin Hubbard in round two. I think he gets it done. A lot of people are going to press on Austin Hubbard for this one because of his grab one. But I think once you get hit, which we've seen Austin Hubbard get hit in the past and get uh, and put down. It, it's tough to, to recover from it. And I think Robo has something in him just with the, uh, pushing forward and being able to be accurate with his punches and to get into wars with guys. And I just like him, and especially with him being the underdog in this one, I think there's value and go with him because to me this is a 50-50 fight. But I'm leaning towards the guy that has finishing power in Colt and Kurt Holobo here. And I think he gets it done round two. 
Now, along with bets for this one, this is a little tougher if you look into it. Uh, but I love uh, Kurt being the plus 146 underdog. That's good odds on a 50-50 uh, like fight. You look at him winning by KO, TKO, that's plus 500. I think if he wins, he wins by that. That's very good and very juicy there. If you look at the, the under one and a half, that's plus 220 compared to over one and a half, which is minus 300. So if you want to play it safe, definitely go with the under two and a half, which is plus 130. It's still juicy odds there. It's a little favorable where you have the whole fight for the man to get the knockout because I think that that's what's going to happen. I think Kurt's going to get the knockout and he's going to win this one. So I like the money line plus 146 for Kurt. I like the win by KO, TKO, DQ, which is plus 500. And I like the under two and a half rounds, which is plus 130. So definitely take a look at those. And definitely, uh, if, you, uh, if you're unsure about yourself, wait until it goes live and live bet this one. Because you never know. Uh, maybe he loses round one and you're going to get even better odds. And then he goes to wins rounds two and three. And that's a possibility because I do think that he has a better gas tank than Austin Hubbard. And I think you can play that to your advantage there. So maybe you wait. But those are what I like for this matchup here. I think at the end of the day, Kurt Holobo is going to win the 155-pound championship for this season's uh, uh, tough championship. And I, I like his prospects moving forward because of the skills that he has. And he can add to it afterwards but i think the big the factor in this one is the takedown defenses that he's going to have when austin huppert tries to take him down i think he does a good job of that and that's going to be his pack the victory here is stuffing the takedowns of austin huppert but in this one like i said kurt holobo by uh round two ko to win the championship let's move on to the next fight on the card we got a men's middleweight matchup between Gregory Robocop Rodriguez versus Denise Tudelin. We got Robocop, who's the minus 350 favorite. We got Denise Tudelin, who's the plus 275 underdog. I'm going with Rob Robocop by round one knockout here. This is going to be a guns blazing, uh, just a haymaking uh, affair here. You got Robocop who is always moving forward. He has a very underrated jiu-jitsu. He's pretty decent in the clinch-up. He has knockout power. He can take a shot. Depending on from, from fight to fight, one fight, his chin holds up very well. Other fights, if he gets hit perfectly on the chin, he, he goes down. But for the most part, he showcases his good chin in fights. Then you got Denise Tulum, who, just like Robocop, he has a good power on his hands. He throws. He's a good dy dynamic striker. He has showcased that he is very hittable in fights. He has a very underrated grappling. But he, he has shown a knack for not being able to take hits in in, in the past. And, and he showcased that, which is not very well. You look at the last couple of fights that he's had here at the RoboCop. And for... Uh, he gets a uh, rear naked choke round one by Jung Young Park. He barely beats Jamie Pickett by a uh, knee to ground strikes round two. And Chris I, uh chokes him round two. He he's also uh, got choked out by uh, he got choked out again uh, by Al Scaroff. He gets Kamorn, and then he's been decisioned uh, several times. But I think now looking at it, I think. If you look at the odds, that a sneaky play will be Gregory Rodriguez by round two or three submission. It's in the fact that of all the losses by Denise Tulin, he has lost four times by sub. And he puts himself in bad situations. You look at the odds for uh, uh, Gregory Rodriguez by sub, it's plus 170, very favorable. You look at the, the rounds, Mark, if you, if you bet over one and a half rounds and he gets the sub rounds two or three, like I said, you net plus 135 with the over one and a half rounds. So with this with this one, I'm very uh, confident that Gregory Rodriguez wins this fight. Uh, and I think he uses the power and the striking to set up 
the grapple and, and the submission game to get the tap out. I think he catches Denise with a shot in rounds two or three. He stuns him, and then he jumps on him, and he gets the, the sub uh, on Denise Tulin, whether it's a guillotine or a rare naked choke. I think he gets one or the other. He has that capability, and we've seen in the past that Tulin has been prone to the tap out. So I got Gregory Rodriguez by round two, submission via rare naked choke. I like the over one and a half rounds uh, bet on this fight, and I like the Gregory Rodriguez by sub uh, uh, prop bet as well. I think it's very uh, capable from the get it and put put a very small unit bet on it, put a 0.5 unit bet on it and see if it happens. And if it happens, you hit. If not, it's not that big of a bet to worry about. But I'm definitely putting a small piece on Gregory Rodriguez uh, by sub in this one. So once again, Rodriguez, I got win this one by round two sub. Let's move on to the prelim main event. We got the return of Chris Wyman after a two and a half year layoff. This is a middleweight matchup between Chris Wyman versus Brad Tavares. We got Chris Wyman, who's the plus 210 heavy underdog. We got Brad Tavares, who's the minus 260 favorite. I got Brad Tavares win this one by decision. <laughs> now, I, we don't know what Chris Wyman's going to come back to. At one point in his career, he was one of the guys that he thought would never lose. He was very tough. He had knockout power. He was very quick. He had sharp hands. And he was very accurate with the striking. But now, after uh, having his leg uh, just destroyed like he did uh, two years ago, we don't know what condition he's going to be in. He's not as built up as he used to be. He's going to be coming in very rusty. And you got Brad Tavares, who has been uh, through a lot the last couple of years. He's consistent with his fighting. He's a very tough out. He did get knocked out uh, by Bruno Ferrer, but in the fight before that, he gave uh, Drake uh, Duplessis all he could have in a very tough fight, which showed me a lot about how tough Brad Tavares is. And I think Brad Tavares is just going to be just a little bit more uh, quicker. He's going to land a little bit more, and he's going to be a lot more aggressive. Knowing Chris Wyman might come out a little shaky in the beginning and uh, try to deal things out, knowing that he hasn't fought in two years. So I think he gets it done by decision. I think maybe Brad Tavares uh, wins the first two rounds, and then we, then we see a little bit of uh, more aggressive Chris Wyman round three where – he just throws balls to the wall, and he has a successful round three, but he doesn't get the job done in finishing Tavares. So I got Brad Tavares to win this one by uh, decision. I think that's a very safe bet with where to go. I do not like the minus 260 odds. Not very favorable in a matchup like this. But if you go to Brad Tavares by decision, plus 200, that's very uh, good odds there. You got the over uh, two and a half rounds. That's minus 110 as well. Those are the only two lines I really like in this matchup. So uh, I'm going to stay away from it. But if you want to hit it, yeah, my my advice is go live bet on this fight. Don't bet on the money line. Live bet it. Maybe uh, Chris Wyman could get an early lead or maybe – uh, something happens to where it kind of ma makes it more of a Brad Tavares in the minus 100s area. But if not, like I said, I like the over two and a half uh, rounds line, and I like the Brad Tavares with decision line as well. So I'm going Brad Tavares by decision in this matchup. Let's move on to the main card of the evening. Uh, if you haven't done so already and you're tuning in for the first time, Please smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel for the Bullet Line Entertainment Network. And then please hit us up in the comment section. Let me know what you think of my UFC 292 picks and predictions for this pay-per-view. And then give me your betting lines. Who are you going to bet with uh, uh, this Saturday for UFC 292? Next fight on the card that we have for you on the main card, we got a bantamweight matchup between Marlon Bear versus Pedro Munoz. We got Marlon Bear 
Who coming in at the minus 190 favorite mark. We got Pedro and Munoz coming in as the plus 155 underdog spot. This was originally supposed to be Marlon Cheetah Rivera going up against his former opponent, which I was actually excited to see. Uh, he was pinned up against Henry Cejudo, but Henry Cejudo had the bailout due to his soldier uh, shoulder that he's going to have surgery on. So Pedro Munoz takes this fight on. Three weeks news. Uh, coming in this fight, I'm going with Marlon Vera to win this one by late finish here. You got Pedro Munoz, who is known for his vicious calf kicks. He is a very dynamic kickboxer. He picks and chooses shots. He throws a lot of leg kicks at you to slow you down. He has good, good takedown defense. He has decent striking with his hands and he has good movement. He has good cardio. He tends to take too much damage at times because he's always thrown too many leg kicks because that's what he prefers. He's more dangerous slowing you down and then coming at you with takedowns from time to time. But then you have Cheeto Vera, who has a punch in power. He has KO capability. He's good in the clinch, in the Muay Thai clinch with his knees to his stomach and elbows that he throws to, to the face. He's always moving forward. He has good uh, takedown defense. He showcased that he can beat the top tier in the division. He's beaten Rob Bond. He's beaten Sugar Sean O'Malley. Checking the leg kick and her uh, Sean O'Malley's uh, leg and then finishing him with a uh, granite pound. He's just, he's just, he just has that killer mentality. So I'm going with Marlon Cheetah Bear to win this one, to ins insert himself back into that top five status. With a late KO victory over Pedro Munoz, I think he stuns him, gets him uh, to the ground, grapples up with them, and then he beats him with ground and pound. So I got Cheetah Bear on this one. The minus 190 odds are so-so odds, but uh, they're not as bad. I'm hoping that they drop down to like minus 130, minus 150. If they do, I'm definitely going to bet on Cheetah Bear on this one. When you look at all the other lines that you have on this card, uh, you got to play it safe with this one because you never know what's going to happen. But going to this one, you got Cheetah Vera by Decisions plus 110. You got Cheetah Vera by KO, TKO, DQ plus, one, uh, plus 450. And you look at the over under her rounds mark. I think the, the sweet spot there is under two and a half rounds, which is plus. 255 because I do think that he's going to get the finish and that it's and that's the safe bet because under one and a half is plus 400, but you don't have that much rigor room there. But under two and a half rounds at plus 255, you got a lot of rigor room. So, Cheetah Bear, if he can get a good live on, on him to win with maybe Pedro Munoz uh, being better in round one. Live bet it, and then live bet Cheetah Bear after round one, knowing that he, he should come out quicker rounds two and three, and definitely hit the under two and a half rounds mark at plus 255 uh, odds, and definitely look into also Cheetah Bear by KO, TKO, or DQ, with it being plus 450, because he has the capability of knocking guys out, and I do think that his speed and his quickness inside the clinch is going to be a factor in beating a guy like Pedro Munoz, who is one of the toughest dudes in the division. So in this one, I got Marlon Cheetah Vera winning by late round three uh, knockout. Let's move on to the next fight that we have on the main card. We got a men's bantamweight matchup between Mario Batista versus Damon Blackshear. Uh, we got Demond Blackshear, who's the plus 183 underdog. And we got Mario Batista, who's the minus 225 uh, heavy favorite. We got Blackshear taking the fight on short notice after Cody Garbrandt backed out last week due to uh, unknown reasons. He, he actually, uh, surprised he's taking this fight since he just won this past week. So this is going to be his second fight on seven uh, in seven days. He's coming in uh, this one. He has decent striking, decent movement. He, he has really underrated a uh, submission game. He just won by uh, Twister in the last fight. One of three guys to be able to, to 
a win by Twister in the UFC. And he has KO power, but one of the things that he lacks is his cardio. He tends to do most of his stuff early. And then on the other side, you got Mario Batista. He has a long range. He has great kickboxing. He has good leg kicks. He has good hand strikes, which he mixes up with his leg kicks very well. And he's very well known for throwing a lot of flying knees uh, attacks. And he's going to throw them at you. And he's going to connect on a high rate of those. And he's just going to keep coming at you and overwhelm you. And in this one, I got Mario Batista by round two knockout. I think he could get it done in round one. But I feel like DeMar and Blackshear taking this fight on uh, seven, uh, like seven days nose after just winning a fight. I think he's going to put a lot into going at Batista round one. So one of the things that I'm looking into in this one is, of course, the live bet. I, I love the fact that Demond Black, she has a very good shot of winning round one. So I'm definitely going to look into live Ben uh, Mario Batista after round one, knowing that Black, she is going to put a lot into winning in the first couple of minutes afterwards. You, you expect him to tire out a lot uh, after actually already fighting already last week. And then afterwards, it, it's going to be slim pickings for Mario Batista, and he's going to take over from there on out. And I think he's going to weather the storm round one, and then he's going to go to work round two, and that's where he's going to get the finish. So I think the best plan is to live bet Mario Batista after round one, and then go for inside the distance uh, as well, uh, look into that, because whether it's by submission or by KO, I don't think this fight goes to decision at all. I think Mario Batista is going to win, and win in round two by KO or TKO. I think it gets done. So once again, like I said, live bet this one after round one. And then the bet Mario Batista by KO, TKO, or DQ. I think those are going to be your best bets in this one. So I got Mario Batista by round two knockout in this uh, short news fight in the Bantamweight division. Let's move on to the feature bout. In UFC 292, we got a men's welterweight matchup between Neil Magny versus Ian Machado Gary. We got Neil Magny taking this fight on short notice after Jeff Neal uh, was forced to bail out to, to injury. We got, uh, of course, Ian Machado Gary, who's the minus 440 heavy favorite. We got Neil Magny, the plus 310 uh, underdog. I got Ian Gary to win this one by round uh, to KO, I think he gets it done. He's shoot kissed a lot uh, in the last couple of fights. Uh, the first couple of fights in his uh, career, uh, he, he kind of got very underwhelmed. He was able to win fights by uh, volume, but he wasn't really shoot kissing that knockout finish capability that a lot of people uh, hyped him up to be when he got the call uh, to, to make his debut in the UFC. He was just doing enough just to win fights. He was doing the volume. He was moving around too much. He was kind of showcasing himself a little bit too scared. But now, the last two fights, he showcased the aggressiveness in, inside of him. He's showing the doubters that he can do it. He's coming in there. He's stepping up to the plate. He's getting in front of his opponents. He's thrown uh, with them. He's connecting with a very sharp uh, jabs. He has good hook. He has a good uppercut. He's, he's, he has power in his hands now. He's putting work into being more accurate, more quicker, catching his opponents on the angles. And that's something that Neil Magny is going to struggle with. Neil Magny is the type of fighter that's going to want to clinch up with you, get this into dirty uh, uh, boxing, dirty clinch up game. He's going to push you along the cage, just hold you, uh, throw elbows and knees in the clinch, throw him there and trying to get the fight to the ground with his long reach. But I, I think that Ian Machado Gary has shook his he has a very underrated takedown defense. He's going to be very quick to the punch with the strikes. He's going to be quicker than near Magny. He's going to hurt uh, uh, Magny, and he's going to be pushing him on the back foot. We saw, even though Phil Rowe lost to near Magny, he had him stunned in the very last round. And that's Phil Rowe, and a guy with knockout power. Ian Machado Gary has similar knockout power, but he has way better striking game because of his boxing. 
So I think Ian Macharvik is going to just outbox Maddie. He's going to stuff the takedowns. And I see him getting that round two KO victory here. Of course, the, the very high uh, odds here for Ian Machado Gary, just not bettable and minus 440. So you're either going to have to wait and hopefully uh, live bet it and, and hope that Mio Magni has a great round one. Or if you look into the other bets, Ian Gary by KO, TKO, DQ, it's at even plus 100 odds. Very favorable there. You got Ian Gary wins by submission. Plus 450 there. I might throw like a very small a tidbit uh, 0.5 unit bet on that, knowing that there's a possibility maybe he could get that done. Oh, and then there's Ian Gary wins inside the distance at minus 155. That's pretty decent as well. And they're very favorable with the rounds, Mark. They think the fight's going to go only one round because it's at minus 800, whereas over one and a half is minus 165 and then over two and a half is plus 115 i very like that minus 165 mark uh, there i think in round two it's going to be later in the round that it gets finished so definitely do the minus one uh, 165 bet for over one and a half rounds i think that's a very safe bet and then definitely hit the ian gary by ko tko or dq at plus 150. Those are the only ones that I'm considering this one because of the short news fight and the fact that the odds are just too uh, far gone at the money line to even look into Bandit. And even if you get the live bet, at best, at that minus 440 you might get knocked down to minus 200. So look at those two bets I told you. But in this one, I got Ian Machado Gary winning by uh, KO round two. Let's move on to the next fight on the main card. We got the co main event here. We got the women's strawweight championship between Wei Li Zhang versus Amanda Lamos. Zhang is the minus 330 favorite. Lamos is the plus 250 underdog. I got Wei Li Zhang win this one by round one knockout. Both these guys have knockout power. Amanda Lamos has very underrated uh, jiu jitsu, but she has power in her hands. Uh, she's a round one. Robust style fighter, uh, and then afterwards, she showcased that her uh, cardio needs work on. She starts to slow down after she puts a lot of effort into round one, as uh, she puts 100% power into everything that she throws. Whereas Wei Li Zhang, she throws for power, but then she throws for volume as well. She'll take a little bit off of it just to throw at you and to punish you. And in the last couple of fights since training with Henry Cejudo. She has really showcased her wrestling capabilities with the grappling, and that's where this fight's going to get played here. And right now, I think Ray Zhang goes to the grappling and takes down Lemus right away. And then I, I see round one KO, or I could see a round two or three sub by her because I feel like she's going to wear her, her Lemus, and she's either going to punch her and connect with her because she's going to be the more uh, accurate uh, puncher, or she's just going to uh, drain the gas tank of Lemos and then make her tap. Looking at the odds uh, for her on the betting side of things, because I think Wei Zhang is clear cut favorite here. You got her winning by KO, TKO, DQs plus 140. You got by uh, submission is a, a very nice plus 300. And then you got the, of course, the rounds mark. If you look at the rounds, the, you're really not making anything unless you get to the minus two and a half rounds mark, which is plus 105. They're assuming that Lamos uh, isn't going to last that long in, in a loss. So if you go with over one and a half rounds, it's minus 200. That's going to be your best bet because I feel like this could be a short fight with the gas tank of Lamos not being as well. And then the finishing capabilities she has and what way Li Zhang has. If Lamos if we're to win uh, shockingly, it's going to be in round one when her power is at the, its highest. But I feel like Ray Zhang is going to be just too much for her. She has the striking power. She has the grappling. And I think my end bet is going to be round two or three submission for Wei Zhang. I think she wears her out, gets her to the mat, and she gets her done uh, by Darsh Choke. And that's going to be my uh, bet on this one. So definitely look at the, the submission 
put a small bet on that one. Like I said, it's a very viable uh, bet there. But other than that, I'm staying away from this one. I, I'm just going to do maybe a very small, minuscule uh, size bet of Wei Zeng by submission because the odds are so high and nice for Ben. And the fact that uh, Amanda Lemus has very bad cardio, I think it's this potential for that to happen. So once again, I got Wei Li Zhang win this one by round two or three submission. Let's move on to the main event. Even once again, if you're tuning in for the first time, please smash the like button down below and hit us up in the comment section to the left. Let me know what you think of my picks and predictions for UFC 292. And please give me your betting uh, uh, like picks for this fight card uh, this Saturday uh, live on Peeper View. And then once again, like I said before, please join us on the Discord channel. All you got to do is hit the link in the pin post and then join the, the channel. Uh, we got a bunch of channels for UFC talk, for sports talk, for wrestling talk, entertainment talk. We got rooms to share your and your content. We're going to be sharing our content as our, as well. We want to uh, increase and grow the Bloodline Entertainment family. And if you feel like you want to join the family and join in the discussions, where we're not live, join the Discord channel on the pin post. We 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 offer everybody up into Discord channel. And it's a perfect way to get to know us and to just talk sports. And then have discussions. So definitely join the Discord channel with the pin post in, in, in the comment section. Let's move on to the main event. Ethan, we got the men's band and week championship between the champion Alan Jermaine Sterling Sterling versus Sugar Sean O'Malley, the number one contender. Sterling is the minus 270 favorite. Sean O'Malley is the plus 210 underdog. I got Sterling to win this one by round three submission via rear naked choke. You got uh, Alchemine Sterling, who has a good uh, frame. He is uh, he's tall for the division. He has high level uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu. He is a submission uh, expert. He loves to get the, the back of his opponents and then use the backpack technique to wear him out and to get him on the mat to look for submissions. He attacks with straight uh, jab and strikes. He throws naked kicks. He keeps his hands down low, which is one of his weaknesses. And his cardio has been an issue for him in fights. But the last couple of fights, he's kind of showcased that he is. He's able to manage his gas tank. He's able to adapt to new situations in different fights to get the best uh, performance out that he can put. On the opposite side, you got Sean O'Malley, who has that great kickboxing style. He fights well from the distance. He's quick. He has high-level uh, high takedown defense. He's able to mix up leg kicks with strikes. He he outpours a high-volume outtake. He's very quick. He's going to be the quicker guy to the punch when it comes to striking. He gets in, and he gets out right away. And the only blemish that he has on his uh, record is fighting of course, Cheetah Veraway, his leg kick got checked and then he got hurt because of the damage that Cheetah was doing to combat that leg kick. And then you have the Pedro Munoz fight that got and see uh, because of the eye poke, he was actually uh, losing in that one too, because of leg kick. So I could see a scenario where you see Sterling attacking the weakness with the leg kicks but and then looking for takedowns because even though Sean O'Malley it has a good uh, takedown defense. He is a very one-dimensional fighter. He's all about just striking, staying up movement, throwing at angles, and, and then uh, just overwhelming you with the quickness and the power that he has. Whereas Al Jermaine Sterling can stand up and trade with you. He, he has really good uh, naked leg kicks, like I said. Uh, he keeps his hands down because he, he fears good about his uh, defense and movement. And the fact that he has a high level wrestling slash jiu jitsu, he has a high level in both, and he trains with Morab every day to, uh, to prepare for these type of fights. So, when it comes to cardio, 
I think he's going to be fine. And he just went out a few months ago with a five-round uh, grueling fight with Henry Cejudo, who tested him on the grapple level. So, really, the only test here with uh, Sean O'Malley is the striking. I feel like he's going to go back to that fight with uh, uh, Corey Sanhagen. It's very similar. Dealing with a guy with a long reach, uh, uh, with a tall frame, and a very high-level striking background. But I think he gets it done. I think he gets very successful in the clinch game where he throws inside the clinch. And I think he takes the back of Sean O'Malley in round three, and he gets the sub via rear naked choke. A lot of people are going to be on Sean O'Malley to dethrone him because of the striking. But I think just the overall game and then the grapple one side of things are going to be and Sean O'Malley's downfall because he's very one-dimensional. And I think Al Jermaine Sterling uh, retains his belt in this main event on UFC 292. When I'm looking at bets, the minus 250 odds for Sterling at this time, I think they just dropped down a little bit from 270 to 250. I'm going to live bet it because we have two, uh, we got uh, we got five rounds. So there's a very good chance of waiting and hoping that Sean O'Malley has a very good round one. And then you live bet Algerine Sterling when it's closer to even, possibly minus 150, which would be favorable for a guy like him who has very good uh, experience in five round fights. You look at uh, Sterling by submission, it's plus 175. And then you got him by decision, which is plus 240. Those are two very favorable things if you can get the uh, the grappling side of things going. And then I also like over one two and a half rounds in this one. That's at minus 135. So you get a little bit of everything there. You get the over two and a half rounds. You got Sterling by sub. And then you got Sterling by decision. If you do a little bit of everything, you cover all your grounds. And I think that's a favorable uh, way to go with that one if you want to bet on this one. Personally, for me, I'm going to wait until it's live, and then I'm going to maybe live bet Sterling after round one. Other than that, I'm going to stay away from this one. There's a lot of other avenues, like I talked to you guys before, that I'm going to tack on with this fight hard this Saturday. But there's definitely avenues for Al Joe to beat Sean O'Malley in this one. Um, I could have went with Sean O'Malley, but I feel like the grappling is going to be the X factor for Sterling to retain his title in the Bantamweight division over Sugar Sean O'Malley. So once again, in the main event, I got Al Joe Sterling winning by round three rear naked choke submission. Now do it for the UFC 292, the picks and predictions by Cage My IQ. I will be back next week for UFC Fight Night. We got a great one for you next week. We got six weeks more straight of UFC action. So I'm going to be with you guys every week until the end of September. The next fight card, like I said, is UFC Fight Night. Max Holloway versus... This is the Korean Zabi live from Singapore Indoor Stadium in Singapore. And so we get, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, international fight night card, which is very exciting. And we get, like the, the last fight for the Korean Zabi against a uh, decorated uh, UFC future Hall of Famer in Max Holloway. My early prediction is Max Holloway gets it done by decision. That's my early take on that one. But I'm definitely looking forward to that fight night card. And next week, Miles will be back next week with me for that one. So definitely check us out every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. This was a very special Friday edition of UFC 292 Picks and Predictions, considering that we had an off day today with a couple shows off. So I want to fit inside that uh, spot and cover uh, for the Bloodline Entertainment family. And so I moved from Thursday to Friday just for the week. So we'll be back on our normal Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern time time slot uh, live on YouTube. And check out all the other content that we have covering anywhere from wrestling to, of course, fancy football, fancy baseball. We got wrestling. We got entertainment with uh, Graydon. 
Ray covers, of course, uh, uh, movies each week. He just did his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one last week. This week he did his Gran Turismo uh, review. And then next week he is doing his Blue Beetle a review on the director's cut. So definitely check that out with him and check out all the content that we have on the Bloodline Entertainment now. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel down below. Hit us up in the comment section, smash the like button, and check out all the articles and all the stuff that we have on the Bloodline on the Bloodline Network.com website that we have up right now uh, with everything that we have from uh, podcast to articles to merch to our sponsor at W. So once again, before I get going, I'm just going to give a shout out to our sponsor at uh, w energy drink and mer uh, and the bull line merch so ch definitely check out the merch video but other than that i am cage i'm the host of cage my iq and i'll see you guys uh, next week for another edition of cage my iq thanks for tuning in. tired of bored uninspiring merch well you need to go to bloodline network.com slash merch we got merch for everyone men women kids in the home we got tanks, V-necks, T-shirts, coffee cups. And we can't forget about beach towels. That's right. Get your ass off that hot ass sand and get your Bloodline Entertainment Network beach towels. BloodlineNetwork.com slash merch. For your pleasure.